good morning students we are discussing on railway and airport engineering well in today's session we will discuss about railway gauges so let's start the lecture about railway gauges well what is railway gauge well in definition of the gauge that is the clear horizontal distance between two inner faces of two rails forming the track at the top is called as the gauge of the rail well here in the picture you can see these two arrows so the distance between these two points the first one is this and this so the distance this horizontal distance between two inner faces of the rails that known as the railway gauge while talking about the railway gauges in india we are having total five different railway gauges the first that is the broad gauge then there is a standard gauge then the third that is the meter gauge narrow gauge and the light gauge well uh, the clear horizontal distance between all these gauges are mentioned like for the broad gauge the, the distance is 1.676 well for the standard gauge it is 1.435 meter for the meter gauge that horizontal distance is 1 meter for the narrow gauge it's 0 0.762 and for the light gauge the clear horizontal distance is 0 0.610 meter this is about the railway gauges in india now there are a few factors that affect while you are selecting the railway gauges the first factor is the cost of construction well the cost of a railway track is directly proportional to the width of the gauge if the fund available is not sufficient uh, to construct the standard gauge okay a meter gauge or the narrow gauge is also preferred rather than the no railways available no railways at all okay so the cost so the cost of earthwork ballast sleepers etc would proportionally increase with the increasing in the uh, gauge width okay there is a little proportional increase in the acquisition of land for the permanent track with increasing in the gauge the second factor that affect is the volume and nature of the traffic if the intensity of the traffic on the track is likely to be more a gauge wider than the standard gauge is suitable for the heavier loads and the high speed and wider so for the heavier loads and the high speed a wider gauge are required so if while uh, uh, you know preparing or while constructing the railway line we should know that for what purpose we are uh, applying that uh, railway line if it is for the goods train and for the you know uh, heavy load transportation through the railways so on that particular track the gauge should be like standard gauge or we can say the broad gauge okay so it would be better for uh, transportation as well as it will be you know economic uh, for the railways third that is the development of the areas while well, the narrow gauge can be used to develop the thinly populated areas by joining the poor developed areas with the developed urban areas okay so uh, this factor also affect like uh, for what purpose we are applying to develop a particular area so on such place uh, we can even provide narrow gauges so that at least we can you know uh, join uh, two different regions or two different uh, areas with the railways okay so that they can have uh, that all amenities and you know facilities for the transportation and then the fourth factor the physical features of that particular country that also affect while you are choosing uh, you know railway gauge use of uh, narrow gauge is uh, warranted in hilly areas okay where the broad and meter gauge are not possible to you know uh, 
built due to the steep gradients and uh, sharp curves well uh, in the plain areas also where the high speed is not required you know uh, the traffic is light at such place uh, narrow gauge is a correct choice to apply so this is how this uh, you know different type also uh, affect the choice of the particular gauge and the last that is the speed of train well the speed of train is almost proportional to the gauge speed is the function of uh, diameter of wheel which is turn is uh, which in turn is limited by the gauge okay well the wheel diameter is generally kept as uh, 0.75 times of the regular gauge size well this lower speed you know discourage the passenger so to maintain the high speed the broad gauge are preferred okay so these are the factors that uh, affect while selecting the type of gauge or the size of the gauge well the next topic that is uh, about the uniformity of the gauge so throughout the railway line what is the benefit and what could be the drawbacks to maintain a uniform gauge well let's see what are the pros and cons of uniformity of the gauge what could be the problematic things and what could be the advantageous thing if we maintain the uniformity of the gauge well starting with some advantages well the delay cost and hardship in the shifting passengers and the goods from the vehicle uh, you know uh, to one gauge to another gauge can be avoided then the breakage of foods uh, due to the shifting can be avoided uh, by maintaining the uniformity of the gauge the labor expenses of shifting can be saved then locomotives can be effectively used on all the tracks if a uniform gauge is adopted and also wagons can be effectively used on all the tracks if the gauge is uniform well with that also during military movement no time is wasted in shifting of personal and equipment if the gauge is uniform so this is also beneficial to the uh, military aspects okay so these are some advantage of the uniformity of the gauge so let's see some non uniformities of gauges which will create what kind of problems the first that is the difficulty uh, to the passengers well at the point uh, where there is a change of gauge passengers are required to move from the one train to the another and this transfer involves a difficulty like getting accommodation in the new train the second that is the you know transferring the luggage from one train to another train and uh, climbing uh, staircases over the bridges or to change the platforms and moreover okay so this may be the problems that may faced to the you know passengers who are traveling and this will also you know leads to some time gap between two trains so uh, that will also you know enhance the time period of the journey that will uh, also create many problems such as mentioned above so uh, better to follow the uniformity of the gauge rather non uniformity second problems that is difficulties for sending the goods uh, well goods may be damaged during the process of loading and unloading okay so the labor required for the loading and unloading uh, the goods may also go on strike somewhere okay so that will uh, create a problem also you know theft or misplacement of the goods may also occur during the transshipping so that may uh, that may be uh, you know uh, problematic and also large costly yards are to be provided at the junction of the two gauges to store the goods so as the owner of the goods is required to pay the extra mm -hmm. handling charges also and that will definitely result in the increase in the product cost okay so this is also a problem uh, that sending goods and insufficient use of rolling stocks uh, it is a quite clear that a wagon of metro gauge cannot be used for the you know broad gauge so thus uh, sometimes this result in artificial uh, shortage of the wagons 
and many vegans may be you know laying idle on the broad gauge lines while there may be an acute shortage of vegans on the meter gauge line so in such cases uniformity of the gauge will help you uh, for the smooth functioning of the railway fourth that is the equipment stations well a station where two gauge meet will have to be provided with duplicate facilities such as the platform uh, then sandings uh, sanitary arrangements clocks then uh, you know ticket windows etc so this will result in extra expenditure also well the difficulties during war this is you know more important well if the gauge is uh, non uniform and uh, it becomes difficult to transfer the army by rail from one corner to the uh, you know another corner of the country in a very limited period of time then difficulty for the future conversions well, it becomes very difficult and practically uneconomical to widen an existing track in future when some needs arise okay well this is due to the fact that change in gauge also involves change the dimension of rolling stocks and other structures such as you know bridges or tunnels etc so this is how non uniformity of the gauge may create the problems and uh, with that there are some advantages of uh, you know maintaining the uniformity in the gauge well uh, let's uh, see what is a loading gauge a loading gauge consists of a profile made up of the iron angle which is suspended from a frame on the track here you can see this is an iron angle okay which is suspended with a particular chain okay well if the part of the loaded wagon touches this profiles okay this indicates overloading of the train and hence the loading should be reduced before wagon proceeds for its journey well this profile of an angle with the frame is known as the loading gauge well loading gauge are also used to ensure that bulky goods loaded wagons do not project beyond the specified dimension and this helps to prevent the wagons falling any structure on the journey the structure which may be falled by wagons in the journey are you know soffit or the bridges tunnel signal post etc loading gauge are generally used in you know goods yards adjacent to the tunnels through bridge and you know uh, such particular points so this is about the loading gauge next is the construction gauge well dimension of the construction gauge are obtained by adding suitable clearance at the top and sides of the loading gauge thus the construction gauge decides width the height of the various structures such as you know uh, bridges tunnels etc it incidentally also decides the maximum dimension of the rolling stocks loading gauge and the construction gauge play an important role in deciding the carrying capacity of a locomotive the pioneers of uh, british railways adopted smaller construction of gauge but other countries have adopted larger construction gauge this is all about the loading gauge and the uh, construction gauge i hope students you understand this topic properly okay so this is all about the railway gauges thank you so much students for your kind attention we'll see you in the next lecture